Damon Dash goes in on Lee Daniels and a lot more on Black Hollywood Lives this week. You are now tuned in to Black Hollywood Lives. The beat. Where did you come from, baby? Right. Like, we're going to get in trouble. I know. I know. We're going to get in trouble. I know, I know, but I had to do it. Welcome to Black Hollywood Lives this week. I'm your host, Daryl Christian. Joining me is my dancing partner, Courtney Stewart. Oh, what's up, y'all? You know we had to come into a little Michael Jackson because we are celebrating. Celebrating the legacy. The legacy of Michael Jackson. This yes. is the ninth year anniversary of his death. Can you believe nine years I know. Of it's crazy. I remember exactly where I was and when I heard it and what I were didn't you doing? believe it. Believe it or not, I was in Connecticut with Maria and Kevin oh, the movie? working on the movie. Wow. And we were in the middle of nowhere and had very little cell reception. And we were like, oh, that's lies. He's not dead. No way. And when it was like for real, for real, I was like, that's crazy. Sitting I was, at their kitchen table. That's, yep. that's really crazy. Actually. I remember it very exactly. I was at the gas station pumping gas, and one of the, you know, how they have the little uh, like TVs at mm -hmm. the gas stations. It came on, it popped on. Oh my God. And I was like, what? I was like, that can't like, be true. No. I was like, that ain't true. That ain't real. And I was Lies. like, that's not real. That's not yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It well, RIP Michael, we miss you. And also, their family had another loss this week. Of uh, the probably one of the most famous dads in entertainment, honestly. Famous Joe, parent adjur. Uh, for sure. Ever. Joe Jackson. Yeah. Um, he died this week at the age of 89 from pa pancreatic that cancer. cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just, I feel like they were very low key they about were, the information. He's been sick for a while. He's been sick for a few years. Because I remember, what was it, a couple years ago, Janet like flew down she did, somewhere yeah. because she was on tour and yeah. they thought that was the end. And pancreatic cancer is no joke. It's no joke. Yeah. Um, so he's hung on for quite some time. And it yes. was, there was a lot of tributes from Michael's kids, yeah. Paris and uh, Prince. Yeah. Where is Blanket, y'all? I don't Does anybody know where Blanket is? I don't know where Blanket is. Nobody knows where Blanket is. But anyway, they gave some beautiful tributes to, they called him, darn it, I just forgot. They had a nickname for him, the Hawk or something? Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. But it was really precious and beautiful. And obviously a controversial figure yeah. when it comes to parenting and yeah. some of the things that he did. But in the yeah. end, he gave us the Jacksons. He gave us the Jacksons. He and gave us many, the many years of that, and still we're getting some great Jacksons. Yes. Jenna's still doing her thing. Yes. You know, so. Yes. And, yes. and now there's the new generations. There's a no whole new generation, and I just have to say this because I heard this, I think it was on TMZ yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, I don't remember. But they were actually debating whether or not Kris Jenner and the Kardashian-ness is in the same basic league as what Joe Jackson did with the Jacksons. And a lot of folks was like, absolutely, for sure. Look what they've done. How do you feel about I'm gonna that? I'm going to say yes to that. Okay. I mean, the only difference is, you know, Joe Jackson was known to be harsh uh, and very, uh, very disciplinary person. Yes. Uh, I haven't heard what Kris Jenner's style is because if I'm watching the Kardashians, it look like they run all over her. Yeah, but for sure. I, I, maybe that's not the case. You know what I mean? Because clearly, she's done something right. She's she's done some amazing things and a lot of things right. But I will have to say. That's blasphemy, okay? The Jacksons and the Kardashians don't get to be in the same category. I don't care how financially successful they are. They're great. It's amazing for them. But that's but a you personal do not opinion. Get to obviously as but, but, yours was but your no, personal but what, opinion. No, but what I'm saying is that could be. The, are you talking about on a financial I'm level talking or on about a or what? She curate. The Jacksons were curating very special talents. The Kardashians capitalized on a uh, opportunity that okay. th they don't get me wrong it was a very skilled effort sure. in business building but they capitalized off of a opportunity that was not necessarily the most whatever what I don't even know what we would call it at this point whatever yeah, yeah. but to put that to me in the same category as the artistry and creativity and grow, like that just isn't fair it's just not fair I don't think it's fair but Chris Jenner's a bomb and so Absolutely. I, I, I always just say this. Think, I want her to be I think my it's manager. comparing apples and oranges, and I just can't sit with that. Not that I feel like Michael would roll in his grave. Well, I don't. Yeah, we'll 
see. Daryl's like, yeah, them uh, Kardashians is just as amazing. Oh, it's the no. same no, thing. No, no, I the think, I think, listen, here, well, here's the last time. You're going to lose your black heart with this no, conversation. No, 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 no. I don't want to I, I keep going on about it, but what I will say this is that years from now, yes. the way we look at the Jacksons, I think. Hell no. On, on, Hell on, no. on, on the effects no, of pop no, culture. No. I, on the effects of pop culture. Anybody listen to us? On the effects of pop culture. Anybody listen to us? Please tweet and tell us what you think. Anybody listen to us? I am not co-signing on none of that from Daryl. Y'all put him over there. I'm over her. I'm saying the effects on pop culture. Okay. The Kardashians will be oh remembered. J- I feel like the same way the Jacksons okay. have been remembered okay. right okay. now. Okay. I'm not okay. talking about. I'm just okay. talking about on a pop culture level. Okay. Okay. I, I refuse to put those in the same category or sentences. I'm gonna let you have that all, all right. for yourself. Okay. And we gonna move on because you sipping on your warm tea. I'm sipping on my <laughs> tea, and we was all sipping on tea all week when we saw this story pop up in the news. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you thought when you saw. I love the video. I was like, Lord, what is really going on? I stumbled across this story while I was on Twitter, and someone was talking about how, oh, well, Dame Dash comes for Lee Daniels, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, man, but when Monique came from, everybody was trying to tell that, say that Monique was crazy. And I was like, well, what the hell did Dame and Dash and Lee Daniels have to do with each other? Well, y'all. A lot. Apparently a whole lot. So for those of you that may not be aware, Dame and Dash, years and years ago, Back in the day before Lee Daniels of the Lee Daniels that we know of, that's, you know, producing Star and Empire and Precious and all these great movies, he was just, you know, a dude in New York trying to make it, trying to be a director and looking for investors and wanting to make a movie. So he somehow linked up with Damon Dash, and Damon Dash had just had some bad experience with Harvey Weinstein yep. in the independent film world. And Damon Dash, as a businessman, was like, I want to be like legit in independent film, and I want to do it in my own, you know, in my own way instead of like depending on people like Harvey Weinstein that don't care about my culture. So he's like, I'm about to get with this brother. He's a good director. He's excited. Here's an opportunity. Damon Dash wrote a check for $2 million so that Lee Daniels could make a film. Two million dollars, yes. okay? Two million dollars. And that was in 2004. And there was a film called The Huntsman. And then there was another film called Shadow Boxer that was sort of like linked in together, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but what had happened was is that Lee was like, yo, bro, if you give me this money, you're going to get this money back in like three months. No doubt. I'm going to pay you back. It's going to be real easy. Found that kind of crazy because in the independent film world, for those of y'all that don't know, to run back that kind of money in that amount of time is kind of a shady thought. But perhaps at the time he thought he had a distribution deal or something already set in place and he just had to finish the movie and he'd get the money back. Well, fast forward to 2014, Damon Dash still ain't got his $2 million back. And for those of y'all that don't know, between 2005 and 2014, Lee Daniels has had quite a Several. bit of success, okay? Because mm-hmm. Precious did really well, and he went on and did, you know, he's on TV. He started, Empire started in 2014 or Around 2015, yeah. right? And what, either way, he was getting the deal. So Damon Dash sued him, and they settled out of court for an amount of money. Y'all, Lee did not pay him again. Push forward to 2018. We at the Diana Ross concert, singing everything about love and being all happy and whatnot. Damon Dash, Ain't no mountain high enough. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Damon Dash is in his box, like trying to sing along, and he looked down and he says, "Is that uh, okay?" Yeah, he, he rolled said, up. He rolled up. That's Lee Daniels. <laughs> Let me have a conversation. He rolls up to Lee Daniels and goes off. He's like, "Bro, where's my money?" Where, and Lee's all like, "Um, I'm, I'm gonna get you your money, brother. Like, let's not. Do, where's my money, bro?" I'm going to get you your money. So they go back and forth for a little while. Um, they they ended it peacefully. Damon Dash went on to TMZ, and he was like, I didn't get real violent because I respect Diana Ross, not because I respect Lee Daniels. He went on to call Lee Daniels a culture vulture and saying basically that he took that money knowing that he wasn't going to pay it back, and he was just using the support of his brothers in the hood to get ahead. But then now that he's ahead, he's not trying to lift and give back and do basically do right. Were y'all shocked? Were y'all surprised? I mean, the video alone, I just was like, I, the shock on Lee's face, though, when Damon rolled yes. up on him, though, and, and and you could tell that he didn't know what to do. because he, he didn't know if he was Damon about to get dead. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. He didn't, he didn't know, know if he was about to get popped or, like, what was going on. He was. He was. <laughs> It was all falling off his shoulder, <laughs> and, and then you see the people rolling around. I just wonder who was doing, who was recording the video because they got I don't good, know. they got good front they row were, coverage. They had of to it. be right there. They were right there. But that was super crazy. But now uh, Damon is back, going back to court, and he's suing him again for I, this I, time for five million dollars. I'm, I have a feeling that he's probably going to win. I'm actually, like, well, he technically won the first. Like, well, why, why is Lee not running him his money? Like, Lee, 
what you doing? Like, yeah, write I mean, the brother a check. Yeah, I feel like, Lee, you got that money. Especially like, now. Okay, you done got the second show on Fox, right. bro. Like, you can't say you hurting for, I mean, it's a right. lot of money, don't get right. me wrong, but. Or at least work out an installment plan or something. Yeah, because you know? I tried to, like, be like, okay, well, the story sounds kind of like Lee overpromised yeah. in the beginning, which is fair, but. You know, whatever. But and going into it, Damon Dash should know filmmaking and that kind of thing. Like especially indie film, like there ain't no money in that very often. Like right. so, the the guarantee of your money back seemed a little extreme to me. But once they settled, and obviously Lee said he would pay something when they settled in 2014, and he still ain't paid him no right. money. I just don't want to be on Damon Dash's bad side because I feel I feel like he can make a lot of trouble for you. I know. And, and even when he was saying, tell her, he was at the concert yelling, tell everybody what kind of man, man you, you are. are. Yeah, he and, was going. He was going in. He's like, tell him, tell him. Yeah. Diana's singing, yeah. ain't no mountain high enough. Tell him. Tell him. Tell, and he kept, wow. But yeah. I, I was very proud that it, it, they, they kept their hands to themselves. They kept it to themselves. And, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if it was, some people were like, well, it's not appropriate. How are you going to just go up? And I was like, but he saw him. Like, he if you him. see somebody that owe you $2 million. I mean, I might roll up like that, And too. it's not like you see them regularly, and if you warn them, like, they get covered, whatever. Like, he, he wanted to I mean, I might roll him. like that, too. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. $2 million? For $2 million, I roll up there like that. For and real. I might have not have been that civil. Right. But then again, he probably got, like, way more money than that, so he ain't that worried about it. But it's the principle. Right. It is the principle. Well, good luck, Lee Daniels. You're going to probably owe him $5 million, exactly. and you just need to write a brother a check. Yeah. All right, so moving on. Moving on. Principal. We're going to fill you in on a little bit of politics for the week. Yes. You sound so excited. Mm-hmm. I always am when we have You're this. You're so excited when I'm we so talk tired about of talking the about politics. Chump Trump. You can't be tired. We, I'm not, we're not even talking about, we're not going to talk, well, we are going to well, talk about 45, Well, he is affecting this. Obviously. So, yeah. So, for those of you guys that aren't aware, this is just your little awareness for the week. So, this week we had a very um, unfortunate, slightly expected, but not quite as expected, uh, retirement off of the Supreme Court. Judge Kennedy basically was like, y'all, I'm tired. I'm old. I'm 81. I'm out. Deuces. Deuces. He threw up the Deuces. Which, for those of you guys that don't care or think you don't care or don't really understand what difference it makes, he is mostly a conservative judge, but is has been the swing vote in the situation. So nine judges on the court, you know, four uh, conservatives, four uh, liberals technically, and then there's one swing vote. He was the swing vote. He usually swung conservative, but every once in a while you could count on him to swing on the, the other way. side. Yeah. Um, so he's retiring. And the reason this is stressful is obviously because Trump just uh, nominated... I like how your voice switches. <laughs> obviously. It just obviously went through a whole different little problem. layer thing. Because 45 nominated a very conservative judge mm-hmm. and appointed one last year. And that's Neil Gorsuch. So he's on the court. That was the seat that many Obamaites believe was stolen from Obama because you, if y'all remember when Obama was the lame duck, they wouldn't even allow him to, you know, they wouldn't even like he, have the hearings for right. the guy that he, Merrick Garland, who he had nominated. So we already got him. So now we about to get another probably severely conservative judge, mm-hmm. which is basically going to tip the court in favor of severe conservatism. Mm-hmm. In addition, Ruth Bader Ginsburg need to eat all her vegetables and drink some CBD oil and keep it strong because who we were really expecting to retire was probably going to have to be her because right. she's the oldest on the yeah, court. She she's 84 years old. So now we got to pray, y'all, that she hold on real strong until we get to the next presidential election. Otherwise, it's going to be a 6-3 situation yes. in the court, yeah. which is... And for those of you, I don't know what they're teaching y'all in school these days, but the Supreme Court seat is for life. Yeah. It's not over until they die or they decide to retire. And everybody, for the most part, at this point, other than our other conservative judge, our, our other liberal ju- um, justice, he is 74, I yeah, believe. Yeah, I was going to say he's in his 70s. He's in his 70s. But everybody else is like 65 and under, so they about to be there for a minute. So for those of you guys that don't understand, recognize they brought down a couple of decisions this week, actually, that some people are super upset about. They upheld the Muslim ban. They did. Because the conser- the court swung conservative, swung conservative. And they also kind of took a jab at the unions um, and upheld a decision that basically is a stab to unions and giving you, saying it's your First Amendment right not to be in a union or pay to be in the union if you don't choose to. So it, 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 it's going in a different direction. We might need to be a little scared. We should be scared. I'm a little nervous. Yeah. I admitted I was shook. Even though we kind of knew going into the election for 45 that 
whoever won. They're going to have. They were going to have quite a few justices to possibly, you know, put on the court. But yeah, so I'm just holding my pearls. Well, they also the big. Also, I'm not to add to the the misery. um, What's working against Democrats is that Democrats don't control the Senate at all. You know. Oh, oh no, and they also changed uh, uh, the, what was it, Mitch McConnell did something where he changed the policy that they can, a simple majority will break the filibuster. Right. So it's not like we can hold out and not do a vote like right. they did we have to, to yeah. Obama. And of course, if you know, like the Senate right now is uh, even, but the swing vote in the Senate is the vice president. Who's right. Mike Pence? Right. Obviously. <laughs> right. <laughs> we know where that's we going. We know where that's going, right. So there you go. So your abortion rights are probably about to be rejected in about the next year and a half. And who knows what they're going to do with any kind of LGBTQ situations that, that come up. Like, there's a lot that there's could lot come. The We just talked last night at your event about the federal legalization of marijuana. Cannabis, yeah. I don't know what I don't know role. how that falls. I mean, I don't, I mean that's, that, that might be, be in a different category because of the be. revenue that's... Possibly, but be, you never know. But you don't know. Something could come up that yeah. gets up there, and who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And they also say, what was also a fact, is that Senate uh, Republicans only need 50 votes. Uh, if all 51 Republicans support Trump's pick, that person will be the yeah. person. it's a simple so, majority now. Yeah, it's a little scary. Be nervous, guys. Be nervous. Be nervous. It's changing right in front Real quick of like. our eyes. Real quick like. And yeah. So get busy. Get busy. Get busy doing. All right. We're going to move on to our EUR Web Story Spotlight of the Week. Ah. EUR Web Story Spotlight of the Week. All right, I'm just going to start off by saying, haven't white folks realized you got to stop calling cops on some things involving black people that are unnecessary and undangerous and, 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 and just... I want to talk to these white people. Like, I would like to have conversations with these white people. We need to, like, circle up those like, white why are you people. that scared? Like, are you that what scared? was you scared of? Yeah. Okay, I guess right, you should so, actually tell All right, tell let me story. tell the story. All right. <laughs> so, it, I'm sure you guys have heard about this. There is a woman in San Francisco who's now, her name is uh, Permit, <laughs> Permit even, Patty. She is Permit Patty Permit for Permit Patty. Life. I was going to give her real her name, own, but no, I'm never going to even know. say She's her real Permit name. Patty for so, life. Permit Patty, uh, you know, as a week ago or so, was in trouble because apparently she was trying to work in her apartment in San Francisco. And there was a young black girl with her mother, who's eight years old, who was selling waters for $2 outside side of her window because she, her mother had recently lost her job and she was trying to raise money to go to Disneyland. Mm. Sounds fair and sweet to me. Doesn't yeah. it sound and fair and sweet to me? And it's summertime, you know, it's summertime. the kids finally doing you know. something, like, why you mad? Yes, well, Permit Patty was mad because she said she'd been trying to work and the kids were loud and the mom was loud and the noise around her window was loud and she couldn't concentrate. She said she just snapped. And when she, she said countless times she asked them to be quiet with no responses and it wasn't getting what she needed. So she walked outside and decided to call the cops. Or what she says, mm-hmm. initiate to call the cops. So this video... What, what that, that mean? Yeah, what does that really mean? So we have a little <laughs> clip here of her walking out, allegedly calling the cops girl sell some water she calling the police on an eight-year-old little girl you can hide all you want the whole world gonna see you boo yeah and um illegally selling water without a permit yeah on my property not your property on so that was a little clip, and you can watch the whole video of, of that. So, you know, she was upset because the waters were also uh, illegally being sold without, yes, a permit without a permit on her on her block, uh, on her stoop. Yeah. And um, so, you know, that video went viral, and hence the name Permit Patty. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, there's been a lot of backlash online because people saw these videos. And, you know, we ain't hearing it no more about the, the calling the cops on us no, and no, uh, unnecessarily, no, and no, we just no, trying to no. handle our business, and you trying to call it's cops on us. too many people and kids getting shot Too by many the kids, too many important important things to call, for the police to be involved with they don't need to be involved with this so anyway she has now she had a cannabis company it was called Treatwell and it was a company that sells pain um, it, it basically sells pain easing cannabis based items for humans and pets mm-hmm. she was the CEO she had to step down because of all the backlash she was getting she also didn't want it to affect her other employees who she said because of her actions basically she didn't feel like they should be you know involved in this um, uh, the the so basically she's she's also been dropped from a documentary that was coming out called Lady Buds oh. and it was a documentary focusing on women who are uh, you know who run More illegal cannabis, cannabis industry industry. companies mm-hmm. so she's getting a lot of backlash um, and the funny thing is there also is a confirmation now where she said that she did not call the police there was an audio uh, audio 
recording that was released by the police that shows that she actually did call the police and apparently there was a little bit of a disconnect so when she called uh, they were transferring her and it was like a, they said it was like 17 seconds of mm -hmm. silence and they don't know if she got disconnected or if she hung, hung up, up in that process okay. um, but what do you feel about her and all this backlash and her also having to walk away or step down from her company well I have zero sympathy for you permit patty first of all if you weren't calling the police, then you're just an asshole because you were trying to scare an eight-year-old girl right. off the street right? for selling water, water, okay? And granted, if it was like a whole group of kids running up and down the street sure. yelling, like it. maybe that was like this one person walking up and down the street saying, "Give me, like, girl, put your headphones on. It's not that serious. But we know that was lies. You called the police. And it's really sad that you think you need to go on air because she was on the news crying. Was crying. And yeah. like, oh, it's She's not about threats. race. Yeah. And it, now I didn't even see her until I was down there. But right. I'm guessing y'all live in the same building. So you probably knew who she was. And right. you're like, that little black girl's down there getting on my nerves. I'm going to call the police. Like, <laughs> I would really love it. Instead of calling the police, if you just walk downstairs and be kind and be like, hey, I'm writing right now. Would you guys mind like maybe going up a little half block and yell? And they can say no, but at least you were being a human instead of being a psychopath. Yeah. And wasting people's time and wasting taxpayers' Tax money. dollars. Yes. So shout out to the San Francisco Police Department for not rolling out on no bullshit. Yeah. But and, yeah. And she, um, so <laughs> she said that she had gone to the mom and said some things to her, but the mom of the eight year old said that she never came out and said, like, hey, no. you know, is loud in here. She said she just stormed out, as we saw with the phone, and was calling the police. I'm pretty sure she probably just stormed out. I'm pretty sure, because I feel like, I don't know, like she she appears to me to be scared. You know what I mean? Like, scared to approach a black person. Yeah. She gives me that vibe. But I could like, be wrong. I don't want to say anything. Yeah, like, they may, you know, I'd rather call the know. police yeah. than actually I don't speak get involved, to them. But because scared, in the yeah. end, that's what's messed up, is because it's like, oh, I'm scared to approach them. You're scared to approach, because they'll probably be like, nah, sis, we selling water. Leave right. us alone. Right. And they're allowed to do that, the same yeah. way that you are allowed to ask them to be, like, quieter they can say no right. like that's just sort of how life works so it's it's and it's not a a issue that the police should ever no, have been this involved is not in. a police like issue. you you wouldn't have done it if it was i'm sorry you wouldn't have if it was a cute little white kid with his lemonade stand smiling and saying hey would you like to buy lemonade for five cents or whatever right. i don't know what are they selling now like $10? it's probably like five dollars <laughs> <laughs> inflation baby it's like ten dollars for it's a, a little couple different of 10 cents that's like, like 1927 yeah. what are you talking about yeah yeah i don't buy it so whatever permit patty i'm sorry you're losing your business actually no i'm not because you're stupid. Well, here, I feel like this is how everybody got to learn. You know what I mean? You yeah, learn. it's going to take, like, because some people, take, You yeah. got to hit them with the revenue. Yeah. Once the revenue stream changes, that's when everybody else Because some people are like, oh, that's too harsh, and yeah. then, 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 and then people were trying to couple that argument with what happened with, what's the name? The Sarah barbecue. Huckabee Sanders in the restaurant. Oh, yeah. And all of that. And I'm like, are these white folks really out here trying to equate the oppression of black and brown people in this country to something like Sarah Huckabee Sanders being asked to leave a restaurant? <laughs> right. Like, yeah, that's... don't get me wrong, you can fall on either side, like, she should have been asked to leave or she should have been allowed to stay. Absolutely. But to equate that to what has been done to black and brown people, in the, like, I yeah, just it's can't. Not, it's like, no, I can't. Yeah, no, like, I, I can't, I can't even it. put it in the same. I can't do it. I can't even put this That's together. That's like, what, yeah. what, what are y'all doing, white folks? Yeah. What, what's happening? Yeah. We, we need a summit. Yeah. Now, yeah. And we need, oh, the best thing I saw, though, somebody posted uh, a commercial of a white woman selling a product called Mind Your Own Fucking Business. <laughs> I gotta see that one. Look that up that on Instagram. I forgot who posted. I gotta figure it out. But it was the best thing ever. It was so hilarious. I was like, we need to get a whole lot of that and get some I crop dusters that. and just spray it all over everybody. Well, the positive part of the story is that the little girl is going to Disneyland because there was a uh, after the story went viral, mm -hmm. uh, there was a patron who paid for her oh, to. Oh, that's so. I sweet. think they get like four tickets for them to go to Disneyland. There's Somebody love paid. In the so world. I love that. See? So she's or, gonna go. See, permit Patty could have been like, yo. I'll buy your tickets to Disneyland she should, if you be quiet. I, I was actually going to say that. You know what? Be quiet. I'll buy your tickets. Or even afterwards, what she should have done is like, you know what? I was I, I called the police. Yeah. What happened was I got I, I had white privilege. I got irritated. I, called, I got irritated. I snapped, which she did say. And then I'm like, but but you know what? I realized I was wrong. Here are four I'm a tickets. Buy, or I'm going to buy all your waters so you don't have to do this here right now. Something. 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 Or, or start a GoFundMe and put in She probably didn't even ask the little girl. She probably went like, hey, what are you doing this right. for? 
Well, she's going to learn now. She didn't care. Good luck with that permit, Patty. All right, last story today, which we're going to leave on a positive note. I'm oh, very happy about this. Upswings. 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 So the Academy, we know that uh, in 2014, hashtag Oscars So White was, uh, was revealed, and yes. there was a lot of uproar about the voting systems in the Academy, how many people were nominated, and... and Cheryl Isaac Boone, yes. she was president at the time of the Academy yes, and was. Had, was making strides she to... She's peaced out. She's since. peaced out. Uh, <laughs> she's definitely peaced out. She was like, but she I was, but, but what she had started, put in place, put yeah. in place is now, a couple years later, is, is starting to, to continue to grow. So the good thing is now is that the Academy of Motion Pictures of Arts, uh, excuse me, the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Science has issued 928 invitations to new members. 38% of the new invitees are people of color. Uh, some of the big names that are involved with the, ta like the talents that were asked to come a part of the Academy are Dave Chappelle, uh, Daniel Kalua, mm -hmm. uh, Mindy Kaling, Tiffany Haddish, Regina Hall, Rashida Jones, Jada Pinkett Smith, Kendrick Lamar, and Quest Love, because they also yeah. extended it to musicians, musicians and producers, yeah. uh, which Soundtracks they always do as well. And all that. Soundtracks yep. and all that. So mm -hmm. at the beginning of 2016, the Academy had six. 1,241 voting members, which were 92% white and 75% male. So that is destined to change very quickly with this new these new I statistics. I, I love it. Well, it I'm has to. Keep it I mean, I'm but but it, but it has to because it, you, they're changing the dynamic of who's involved. <laughs> they are definitely. I, that number still was disappointing to me. The 30. What did you say? 38 percent of the new invitees. 38 uh, percent of the new invitees are people of color. People of color. People of color. I don't know what that breakdown is. How many women and that kind of thing right. too. So yeah, and people of color. Is that just black and brown people? Does that include Asian people? Like. Well, I mean, t you know, Mindy Kaling is is. That's true. So, Not but that, that's more disappointing then, because then the number is still only 38% I mean, for yeah. all the other right. people but other you, than But, but you know how these things go. They're not going to make a 50% a jump. But you know they, what I mean? should. they should. If you can get to 38, it could be 50-50 to start to balance it out in a much more immediate style. That's just a suggestion. I agree. I'm very happy. I, listen, babies, I'll take happy. the baby steps. I, I like it better than it remaining the oh, same, no. and none of these people are involved. Obviously, we don't want it to remain the same, but... Right. We try to be impolite. We try to be impolite. You're right about that. That's how I feel. You're but right. anyway. But then we're gonna get labeled angry. So then. Well, we're it is what it is. You know. Then that's but that's another whole conversation. That's a different day yeah. in conversation. Yeah. Um, now the candidates must be the requirements for this candidates must be sponsored by two members of the branch they're invited to join, and candidates candidates must have demonstrated exceptional achievement in their field. So I would say to everybody that they, they picked wonderful that, people. That, for sure. I read today, a pretty yeah. exceptional in their field. I love it. All right, well, go Academy. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The Oscar noms come up again soon, actually. Yes, it'll be very we'll interesting. Know. Well, the Emmys are coming up, The too. Emmys are in September. I think the Emmys are going to be really amazing this year because really? there's a lot of content that's been out there in the last year, since last year. A lot of content. Yeah. Like, it's a scary amount of content. Like, it's it's, a it's, so, like, we want to be happy about it, but there's, yeah. like, so much content, it's almost overwhelming. It's overwhelming a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree. remember, like, we saw the Gabriel Union show the spinoff uh, of Bad Boys or whatever that was um, breaking she, in. No, no, no. She's doing a TV series. Oh, right, with right. Uh, Jessica Alba. Jessica that's Alba. supposed yeah. to be like the spinoff yeah, yeah. of Bad Boys, right. the movie. And I was all pumped, like, oh, that'll probably end up on TV somewhere. That's cool. Like, let's see that. And then they announced, like, they got passed on, I think, by Fox. And right. then they just announced, like, this week, like, they're on, like, Charter Communications' first yeah. scripted series. And I was like, I don't even know where to find that. I know. Well, that's the thing. Right. Well, you know, it's funny. <laughs> even when we had, um, you know, what, U UMC? U mm -hmm. UMC? I, I, it took me I, took a minute I like, to where, where, like where, how do we get where do I go this? like and how did I like not know about we have Victoria so Rowe who has her yeah. soap opera there exactly. and I, I literally went to look for her. I was like let me find mm -hmm. find out exactly where this is and yeah. there's you know there's Xfinity there's so many different there's so many different, so many things. different things yeah and it's yeah. constantly new things so I mean it's yeah. great but it's a good thing it's a good there's thing room for, there's, you know, there's more opportunities opportunities that means more jobs and absolutely more talent that's being exposed in Hollywood yes it's just more work for us as consumers because then I got to find like can I download that on Apple TV. No, right. I can only get this on this, and I gotta get a Roku over here for this. Like it's a lot. I love my Roku though. It's a lot. I don't have one of those. I got my Roku I, Sling. I have an Apple TV, and then I'm debating: Do I just get a PS4 so I can still play DVDs? Because I still have DVDs. I do too. I mean, I have a DVD player. Well, so. mine almost kind of died, so 
it came back to life like for now, but I'm scared it's gonna like die die for real soon. So. Well, you can go to like um, Goodwill and get it. Well, see, one. that's the thing. I started looking. I'm like, oh my god, it's really hard to find. Like, yeah, remember DVD you used to be able to just go to Best Buy yeah, and just, just buy a DVD. There's like 800, 800 DVD players, like, now and it would like, be like 59.99. Yeah, now it's like four to pick from, and yeah. they're all refurbished. And then, like, <laughs> yeah. you, I'm like, they when did they go? Like, I did. I still have a I still have a v, uh, VCR from my mom's and dad's house. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I don't know That's if it impressive. works. I don't know if it works. That's impressive, Jerry. I want to keep it and see if I can sell it one day for like five thousand dollars. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. It's right. Sort of like how the whatever came before the VCR, that the big disc. Oh, the beta. Laser discs, the big disc. Uh, that was like before we were like like I just know because my dad had like old old stuff. It was like seventies stuff. So it was like something like a laser disc. I don't know what it's called. I don't called. know what that is. But yeah, so that, and obviously that's worth nothing. Yeah. So I don't think your VCR will be worth that. All right, but if y'all want to buy my VCR, <laughs> hit me up <laughs> on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. But who out here What's digitizing all their DVDs? That's what I want to know. Can right. they come and do mine? Because I'm not about to digitize all that. Yeah, you got to do that. I don't even know. I don't even have, they done took the drives off your computers. And they have taken the drives off your computers. What are we supposed to do anyway? We're what are we doing? All right, well, where can fans find you <laughs> to find out about your drives find and your digital drives. and everything? That sounds dirty. That's not hey, nasty. Okay. We, we gonna leave on a nasty note. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't today. know. It's Thursday, um, and it's, Thursday it's almost July Fourth. I know it's Fourth of July. Weekend. And I'm ready to barbecue and sit by a pool and drink. Yes, we are. Um, you can find me on the Fourth of July sitting by a pool drinking. Who's but pool? In, I'm a homegirl, but we'll oh, talk about that later. Right. Um, but in the meantime, find me at Stuart Starlet all over the social media. You can find me at Dario Kristen on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and hopefully by a pool as well next Wednesday. Praise the Lord. Um, everybody have a great weekend. Be safe, be blessed, and don't call the police. White folks, don't call the police. Don't call the police on, on no, barbecues, no barbecues, no children playing in the field, like water, nothing. water, candy, nothing. All Damn right? It. Only for crime. Yes. All right, y'all. Have a great weekend. Peace. Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff. We would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood redefined. You were like,